it is found Matthew 5 verse 10 through 12 three verses blessed are ye when men shall revile you uh, sorry blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of And shall say all manner of things against you. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And you will now turn to John 15, and I'll ask the men to read verse 18. And you may begin, men. I will read verse 19. Come the fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy praise Streams of mercy never ceasing all for songs of love and praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I feel thy goodness through what a warmth of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Come in for us. We have members or persons who have not been here for a long time. We know that our brother here he is not feeling well. And we have some young children, all five children, children of Sister Moore. And we have not been seeing her as regularly as we should. And given to me is prayer. Please pray for those pastors. And I understand that they're pastors of the Adventist Church and their families who are presently hospitalized. So it would seem that we have pastors who are hospitalized. The names were not given to me. We also have the children of Pastor Martin Borrow, and his funeral will be tomorrow. And then we have one Grace Tappin. And we are on a course together. And during this course, her only child died at 10 years old. And uh, she is a member of Linden, the Peniel Church. So please keep those names in mind, the pastors, Sister Moore and her children, and the pastor, uh, uh, tap the, uh, the, uh, the young lady from Peniel Church, or she, that's her only child. Please keep them in mind. We are ready for prayer. Their kind and ever-loving Father, we come before you because you are the only one who can give us the blessings that we need you are the only one who can answer our prayers and not answer our prayers for the present but answer our prayers also for the future you are the only righteous one god and jesus who is our advocate who can hear our prayers who understand what we say whether we speak in dialect, whether we speak formally, and whether we present our prayers openly for everyone to hear, or we are only thinking about you are the only one who know, and you are the only one who gave eternal life. Dear Father, as we look around, 
we have seen another generation experiencing uh, the problems that some other generations would have experienced. In the 1960s, it was polio and whooping cough. Before, it was lung and other problems. Hence, we have monuments to show that these diseases existed and they affected Guyanese. Today, in this era, it is the COVID-19 that has gone into the 2021. 20, and we know that many of the persons who we do not know, especially our brothers who live in the hinterland, in the interior, are uh, between borders. We know that they are affected. We cannot look, uh, look at the television to see their death announcement because it will not be placed there. But we know that many persons in Guyana are affected by whatever is the COVID and you will know exactly God how it came and how it is developing. We would know those who are getting success after it if it came by man's choice. But dear Father, we pray to you because we know that you are the God of hope. You are the God of faith and you are the God of eternal life. Today, before us, we have a family here and we have other families and children. The children are growing up in a world that is becoming more evil. As you listen to the news and as you see, even though man will be trying with all experiments, their father, these children are growing up in this time and they're growing up in a time when people are short-tempered. Persons who are, should be helping are very short-tempered and lack the patience. And so they are growing up in that environment of an adult population and those who are close to them are lacking in patience because this is a fast stage. Yes. Dear Father, we pray for Sister Moore. We pray for other mothers who are here and help their God that they pray, pray, pray for patience and that they take time off even if it is an hour every day, or even if it is hours once a week to teach their children your grace and what you expect of them. We have seen the economic crisis in Guyana, the things that are the cost of things in the market, and we wonder how parents with many children are able to survive and able to help their children financially in all ways. But dear God, would these parents really spend time on their knees, praying and fasting for those who they are expected to mold, and because they are going to have to answer for their children, if they have not given them that molding that they know about and they're exposed to the positive, their father, we know that the blood of their children will be on their head. We pray for Sister Tapin, who has lost her only son, only 10 years old, their father. And when she thought that he began to eat and he was coming around, that is the time he sat. And we ask, we pray that she would be comforted and that it would be, she would be uplifted as she seek your help. I do not know why others are here before this throne of grace, 
why others have come here closer and they have exposed themselves to the church but yes they know their problems and so they are coming here showing that they need prayers that they need help in many ways that they would not reveal publicly we pray for those who have just joined the church this faith is not an easy faith it has been inspired their father and it, we have had order coming down from the time and we pray that they will be able to understand what Sabbath keeping is they'll be able to understand the message that is sent through the seventh day Adventist church in this time and that they will accept with all their heart with all their soul with all their mind with their entire intellect <coughs> we pray for the one who will be bringing the message to us we have read the scripture reading chosen by that one and their father we pray that he will be able to bring the message we are we thank god for the sanctification of him even from a child dear father you will have known the future not others and even from a child you know us by our doing and you knew him by his doing there give him the faith give him the strength give him the trust we pray for even the union family who have returned to Guyana we ask you he cannot come out to church now but we ask you to give him that faith give him the trust give him the strength we ask you dear God to bless all of us and we know how serious it is once you have been exposed to the right once you have been exposed to the gospel of Jesus, we know how serious it is. Help us all to be missionaries in our home. Help us all to be missionaries in our community. Help us all, dear Father, to understand that love is not speaking love, but love is action. And love is very, very deep. It is so deep that Jesus Christ came to this world and spent days on the cross and then he rose again after. That is love. And if it wasn't for love, we should not have been praying. And if it wasn't for that sacrifice. So again, we ask that your Holy Spirit would linger in this auditorium until everything is true. Is our prayer in your name. Amen. Amen. for the offertory. He has required a tent, and this he claims as the very least that man should return to him, he says. I give you nine tents while I require one tent. That is mine. When men withhold that one tent, they rob God. 
Let us pray. Most kind of loving Father, we want to thank you for bringing us into your presence once more, dear God, and for seeing us through this week at work and at school, dear God. And even now as we get back to you, dear God, may we give gracefully to you, dear Father, we ask that the, the proceedings of this offerings, so dear Father, and our tithes, so dear Father, may be of a grateful heart to you, God, and that they may go to the forerunners of your cause and to proceed the gospel, even at this, these times come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
love that never loses its power. Down through the ages, we must trust in the merits of Christ and not lose confidence in what Christ has achieved for us. Amen. Let us pray. Great Yahweh, this is your moment. Our ears, O oh God, are attentive to you. Our hearts are receptive. Therefore, O oh Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer, let us hear what the Spirit has to say to us. And at the end of this message, let us be drawn closer to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn into our Bibles. Matthew 5. Reading from verse 10 to 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. John 15, verse 18. If the world hate you, he know that it hated me before it hated you. If you, if he were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate you. Topic of our discourse today. Enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Who is an enemy of the state? An enemy of the state is someone who is the, who is determined to be seditious, treasonous, a threat to security. Recent times, worse than a disease itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you today that the child of God is an automatic enemy of Babylon. Hello. of conscience has always been permitted watch this at the discretion of the state hello so let me trouble your moments of comfort that the 1260 years the dark chapter of earth's history 
when inquisitions were ordered and sponsored by the church and in collaboration with the state against millions of Protestant reformers who took their stand that regardless of the policies of the then warlord, they were not afraid to take their stand even at the cost of their lives. That attitude, church and state, the apocalypse declares in Revelation 13, will happen again. You didn't hear me. It's going to happen again. And I want to put some relevance to this. Is happening again. No, 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 watch this. It's not new of state enforcement on moral issues against liberty of conscience. May I remind us, not so long ago, the enforcement of homosexuality. Hello? The systematic promulgation of the normalcy of lifestyle prohibited by scripture. And I want to borrow something from my twin elder. And I'm going to coin it this way. His terminology is that if someone introduces a vaccine that is tailored to wipe out more than half the world's population, he would rebel. His terminology of homosexuality, and I'm going to put a spin on it, state-sponsored depopulation of the world just in case you didn't get it. That's it. Now what was the response of the state when this law was enforced? Watch this. We found that churches were willing to rescind their theological stand, their doctrinal position, in order to get along and to coexist. Some pastors went quiet. Now watch this. Some colleges and institutions that should have been founded by the thus said the Lord, those positions were relaxed. Now I don't know that God relaxes his standards, but the church do. In fact, and this is direct quote, from the Pope. Hear what he declared. That he was entrusted with the responsibility by heaven to adjust the law to accommodate homosexuality. Now, now hold on. Don't be too quick to make noise of coming home. Dr. Fauci told USA Today that he does not expect future lockdowns but mandates and after he said that draconian measures were put in place concerning travel concerning buying and selling nothing new come on folk it's just that somehow the landmark of prophecy missed us while we are engaging with the arm of prophecy that declares that you will not be able to buy nor sell, somehow it missed us because of a system of fear that the world now stands behind. And the church has become an advocate. Now watch this. Who is Dr. Fauci? Just in case you, you didn't plug the dots. Watch this. He's the director of U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. But this is not a point. Watch this. He received his medical training at Holy Cross, a Jesuit school 
in Massachusetts. Church and state in the Dark Ages, draconian measures and laws, and we are saying it's going to happen in the future. Is it happening? Well, some theologians say this is a dress rehearsal. Well, I don't see it as dress rehearsal. We are interfacing with it now. Now, folk, if you can't run with the footmen, you're not going to be able to run with the horsemen. Today, many hearts are failing for fear. Fear of loss of income, of mobility. Fear of losing worldly possession. And some fear of death. Well, I learned that the fear of death is worse than death itself. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, in this apocalyptic season, in this apocalyptic age, God's people, point number one, cannot afford any connections with Babylon. Now, what do I mean by no connections? Let me hear you say no connections. No connections. No connections. Now, watch this. The our master himself declared the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me he confidently declared that after his success in the wilderness and what was one of the temptations I can give you this world if you will what fall down and worship me can we confidently declare that the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in us. Now watch this. The master warned us, love not the world, nor the things of the world. Because love of the world is what? Enmity against God. We have got to bring ourselves to understand that in our acquisition, as it relates to our acquisition of wealth, our acquisition, Lord have mercy. Something is saying here the devil is angry with. Now folk, folk, I don't take nothing by chance. We better start praying. Because once God's word is preached, the adversary becomes troubled. Now watch it. Hold on. We are told that we can't serve God and mammon. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Back in the time of the early Christians, it was not a problem to give up wealth. Let me tell you what they did. Those who had sold what they had and give to those who didn't have. So when the instruction came to leave Jerusalem and flee, the Christians didn't have a problem with that. You know why? The treasure was where? In the relationship with Christ. As far as they were concerned, they had found the pearl of great price. They had found a treasure that has salvific and eternal value. Where is our treasure today? How many of us are willing to compromise to preserve our comfort and way of life? When the instruction comes and the Savior impresses on our hearts to pack up and leave, we must be able to do it without apprehension or fear. We ready for country living <laughs> without the gadgets, without the fancy TV, flat screen if you please. I call in a sale on mine if you're interested. Are serious folk as it is I don't know about you 
but based on the apocalyptic unfolding it's not business as usual but what we are hearing brethren crying and sighing and praying for return to normalcy and whilst they're praying for that nature running berserk people are dying people are going to christless graves people are dying from stress huh? people are dying because they have lost hope and some of us have had to battle frustration and even depression it can't be normal see look around you and you'll see that look man look at the prayer cost of living going up how it could be normal can't be business as usual so watch this some are afraid to lose their connections with princes I'm putting it the, the scripture way some say it's not who you know who know you and so you got connections in certain circles and you got what you perceive to be breakthrough based on your connections but I got some news for you that whatever the creator has organized so that you can have a moment of plenty you are given those resources to expand the kingdom of God and not to hold up and to feel nice time is coming that all the, the, the big money that's storing in the banks some folk can get some sad realities because just as the talk of digital vaccinated cards digital money coming with that too if you're not part of the system you're going to suffer or for the child of God it will be a blessing in disguise now ladies and gentlemen we were not called to be comfortable here our acquisition must be with the understanding we are occupying temporarily. We here for a time. Hold on. It was Job who declared, naked came I into this world and naked shall I leave. Some of us behave as though we have control over how long we will keep temporary possession. We sell our souls and sacrifice Man, we play the game of life in order to keep what we don't have the power to determine how long we'll keep. This must not be the attitude of God's people today. And so watch this. Any force against the will, against liberty of conscience, must be safeguarded. May I remind us, the body is the temple of who? Hold on. What? The body is the temple of? You sure it's not you own? You sure? So whatever choice you make to put in must be sanctioned by who? The state. The state. Dr. Fauci. Hold on. Must be sanctioned by who? Now I'm not here to engage in a holy warfare whether you should take or not take. That must be a matter between creature and creator. Not creature and Caesar. If it's between you and Caesar, examine what are your real intents of the heart. Check and see what connections you really have with Christ. Second point. The enemy of the state must understand mission. So even when we pack up and leave and head for country living, the work of evangelism does not end. Hold on. The Savior echoes down through time at us. What he says? Go e what? Into all the what? World and teach and preach 
baptizing all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit. And this gospel shall be preached into all the world as a witness. Then shall the end come. That's why the end ain't come yet. God's angels are still holding back the winds of strife. Now, hold on. We think the wind of strife is what Caesar doing. Not so? Can't buy nor sell. No. No, no, no. Check back the apocalypse. The wind of strife is when Christ leaves the mercy seat and nobody stands up between an offended God and guilty man. That is the wind of strife. When God's wrath will be poured out without mixture. Now watch this. This is the impending doom of Babylon. When God declares Babylon is fallen. This is the message we are to take to God's people in the world. But here's the problem. When the people of the world watch us. Do we see, do they see us consumed by the same fear like them? Lord have mercy. Shouldn't this have been the time, the opportune time for the promulgation of the health reform message? The, the, the advocacy should have been what we've been preaching for over a hundred years now. But you know what's the problem? Some of us didn't in the first place believe what we were preaching. And so many of us didn't practice it. And so we fall into the same diseases like the rest of the world. When we should have been a people walking around with a testimony in blood and in preaching that we serve a risen Savior, that God is greater than any pandemic. But instead we walk in room with fear. We do. I have to go through it firsthand. And now looking back, I understand why God took me down that road. I have to learn to trust Him. Because I didn't have the fancy money to trust myself in the fancy clinics and health centers. I had to depend on God. And listen, He brought me through. And the same God that brought me through can take you through. And if it is His will that you sleep, listen, trust in His will. Because in the first place, He declared that some soldiers will be put to sleep. Mission involves practice and mission. Not only what you talk, but you must live. Because some of us will be the only Jesus some will ever see. What kind of Jesus will see? In the storm. When the boat was assailed by heavy winds and the apostles thought that the boat would capsize, they cast their eyes and saw a peaceful Savior resting, knowing that as long as he is in his father's care, no storm could overtake him. And when they woke him up by fear, he declared, where is your faith? Where is our This is the good news that we must take to the rest of the world. Today, many are walking wrong with boredoms, troubled by the past, the main mistakes, the worry. But hold on, hold on. What was the prophecy in Isaiah? Know your sins be as what? I will make them. And who will they be like? I will make them as whole. That the past doesn't matter. That in Christ, the past has been erased. And like the woman caught in a country, neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. We must be able to walk out there and say the four. The things I used to do, I do them no more. It's a great change since I was born. That I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? That's the good news. That's the mission of all of Why do we preach? The Savior will 
and sow in our part. People in need. The words of the Master apply. Give to him that asks of thee. And from him that borrow, turn not thou away. Listen, we're going to be given tangible opportunities to lay up treasures in heaven. And just in case you missed it, the poor. Oh, <laughs> 
doesn't. He certainly has the power to bring back what was our master, the Lord of the ages, the great Yahweh, the king of the universe, has the power to call back the dead in Christ. Christ declared that on that fateful day, when he comes, the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man and come forth. At the tomb of Lazarus, oh Lord, man, I know on the day when you come back, you're going to call him back. Christ had to lay it straight. Lay it here. Listen, I am the resurrection and the life. Some wise preacher put it this way, and I borrowed from that. He said, that if Christ had gone before Lazarus' tomb and was not specific by saying Lazarus come forth, if he had said, just come forth, all the dead from Adam would have gotten up. So Christ had to be meticulous. Now hold on, when he comes again, he will be meticulous. But, 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 only dying here. And only who are lying in him. Amen. Amen. Well, my name, I'm trying to lose the And I'm safe on that beautiful shore. Just to be near the Lord, I go. Will through the ages be glory for me, the Apostle Paul declares. I have fought a good fight, I have finished the course. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the righteous judge will give me. But hold on, let me tell you the part where I get excited. You see, if you have stopped there, I would have think he discriminated. That word brings a better. Discriminated. With the draconian policies and happening. Oh, be careful. Now watch this. Paul is saying that the God of heaven and earth ain't discriminating. Look what Paul said. Not only me, but all they that walk in the light shall receive the set crown. How cheering is the Christian for? Why traveling here below? It boils us up. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of war. I don't know what your role is. If, like me, you got some aches and pains, I got a knee that ain't so well. Hold on. Some of us got pain in the hip, hello. Some of us got pain in the back. Some of us might have gotten some news from some doctor somewhere that we only have a short time left to live. Well, here's the thing. Watch that old devil straight in the face and say to him, that it don't matter how short it is. Remind him how short this time is. Because my deliverance is Satan's permanent destruction. Just in case we missed it, we're going to be joint ears with Christ and ears of God. And I like to take the scripture literally. I get excited every time I quote the scripture. Hold on. The scripture says, Though it might not yet appear what we shall be, for we know when we shall appear, we shall be as he is. For we shall see him as it is. Ladies and gentlemen, one of these days, if you think I could sing, you ain't hearing nothing yet. One of these days, and this mortal will put all immortality. One of these days, death and the grave will go down into the pit of fire. One of these days, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Now watch this, I'm spending time on this because I hope by the grace of God your fears can be 
self-empowerment. That's, that's what that is God means. That's why he said, choose who this deal with us. That's why he said, obey is better than sacrifice and the backing of the fact of problems. That is why David declared, listen, David declared what? Create in me. And in God, once we have perfected the character of Christ, we have nothing to fear. Be covered. Let me give you a simple call. Let me give you a simple call. Just like ancient Israel, the blood on the doorpost is the blood on the doorpost on your hearts. Well, listen, walk like champions. Walk with courage. Stop submitting to fear and tell others you are not guided by fear but confidence in your God. Those who know in whom they believe, this is my sister's prayer, and then she always said it. Those who know in whom they believe, let me see your hands. You are sure? Yes. 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 Now listen, just in case somebody came in here and they ain't right with God, you better make it right. They got a small window of time left. Just in case you didn't remember, we are living in the antithetical day of atonement when Christ will soon declare it is finished and he will leave the most seed. This is not time to play church. This is time to walk by faith, for the just shall live by faith. Not by sight. So when the time comes to pack up and leave, well, I see it at me time now. You know what I'm I'm not sticking around to see nothing else. By the grace of God, I'm getting up and leave. And I'm heading where I can be focused and nurture my family in the fear and admiration of God. I'm going where I can better be positioned to receive the time of refreshing and I come back and minister, listen, away from the destruction. And I'm not worrying about the supply. God knows how. He fed a prophet with boards of prayer. Boards of prayer. Greedy boards. Fed in like you. Man was waiting from them. This is the same God. Verily, thou shalt be fed. And so those today, you hear and you pour the word of God. You need to make a commitment to Him. Then step out by faith. Those of us here who need to reconnect, step out by faith. Step out without fear. I'm going to call the elder to do a prayer of consecration. Press close to God. Come out here by the grace of God. And don't embrace fear, embrace courage in Christ. He can hear your prayer and he can answer. Hello, Sabbath. You always answer. Hallelujah. Amen.
Lord, a day is coming when the unrighteous shall remain unrighteous. When the filthy shall remain filthy, the unjust will remain unjust. But the holy and righteous will remain such. We pray today that you take away everything that is filthy in us. Echoing the sentiments of Ezekiel 36, 25 through 29. Sprinkle us with clean water that we might be clean. Cleanse every head bowed here and those in Zoom land of our filthiness and of our idols. Give us a new heart and put a new spirit within us. Take away the filthy stony heart from our flesh, Father, and give us hearts of flesh. Lord, you know those hearts of stone. You described it in Jeremiah that they're deceitful above all things. They're wicked, O oh God. In Genesis 6, 5, you said every thought and imagination is continuously evil. Take those stony hearts, great God and Father, and give us hearts of flesh. Hearts of flesh where you can inscribe your law in the inner man and in the tales of our hearts. Jeremiah chapter 1, chapter 3, and chapter 4. That we, we may gather.